Chinese flag as we honor our country as a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as I invite you and our mentors to come up and sing our music. Please be seated. Good evening. For those parents that have not had the pleasure of meeting me in my office, I'm Gary Bigger, Principal of Renaissance High School. <laughs> it's with pride of each student's accomplishment that I welcome you to the Renaissance High School Class of 2023 graduation ceremony. You've arrived at this point in your life ready to put one large accomplishment behind you and to step forward with confidence into the next phase of your life. I want to commend you on your perseverance as you have worked with grit and determination to finish your high school career. With this perseverance, I believe that you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Many people helped you along the way I would like to ask that if you're a parent, sibling, grandparent, aunt, uncle, friend to a graduate, please stand so the graduates can applaud you for helping them along their journey. There might be another group that uh, did a little something along the way to help you. So please allow me to introduce the staff of Renaissance High School. As I state your name, please stand and remain standing. Daryl Bialis, Matt Blow, Heidi Buckley, Megan Cook, Zach Flewelling, Mary Hurstensteel, Patricia Hilliker, Rebecca Carr, Scott Humphrey, Ryan Call, Doug Kennedy, Jared Lawrence, Edna Sove, Christina Verkest, Stacy Youngerman, Amy Horvath, Terry Porritt, Catherine Smith, Andrew Breen, Jeff Kelly, John Pecco, and Claudia Shermer-Horn. Thank you. So, please be seated. It is my pleasure at this time to invite Kelly Horst, President of the Board of Education, to introduce the Board of Education that are present tonight and to share some wise words with us. Good evening. Well, the first wise thing I'm going to do is not sing, which I attempted to do last year following the national anthem, and then my mic was cut out on me. 
I was told it was an accident, but I'm not so sure. So, lesson learned, we won't attempt that again. Uh, good evening, let me introduce to you my fellow Board of Education members who are with me this evening to honor you, the class of 2023, Vice President Elizabeth Egan. Thank you. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Secretary Cheryl McGinnis, Treasurer Stephanie Crane, and Trustees Steve Heyer and Amanda Love. On behalf of the Board of Education, I extend a warm welcome to the Renaissance Class of 2023 and to your proud parents, family members, and friends. This ceremony is certainly one of the most important and enjoyable duties we have as a Board of Education. Tonight, we confer the credential that assures our community that Clarkston Community Schools has fulfilled its vision and promise to you, the Class of 2023 that the graduates before us are prepared for a future that excites them and that they believe they can achieve their dreams. Earning your high school diploma changes the course of your life. The people in this room changed your life. For some of you, it's a family member. For others, it's a teacher, a counselor, or a friend. I urge you to pause and think about those individuals who have inspired you and supported you to keep going when times got tough. Now take a deep breath. Graduates, take a deep breath and really soak up this moment. All of that optimism and pride that you feel in this room right now, it's directed at you and you earned it. Now a night like tonight can also be a night of mixed emotions. Some of you will see tonight as an ending, others of you will see it as a beginning, or maybe you see it as, in the words of Peter Quill at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, that's a Marvel fail, folks. A bit of both. We all see things differently given the moment. Now graduates, in a few minutes, maybe an hour or so, you will cross this stage, receive your diploma, shake a few hands, and give Mr. Bigger a final high five or a hug. Likely a hug, right? Yes, he likes his hugs. We will watch you take your last walk as part of Clarkston Community Schools. But this is what your family members and friends will see as you cross this stage. Their chubby-cheeked five-year-old who was so eager to skip off to kindergarten and the memories of your Clarkston firsts will flood them. Play dates, class parties, field days and field trips, maybe Mother's Day tea or that first donuts with dads, and parent-teacher conferences in those tiny chairs. Remember those parents? Is it any wonder your family keeps begging for time to stand still, all the while you think high school can't end fast enough? In this moment, all of these things can be true. Tonight's ceremony is both an ending and a beginning. Families can be both beaming with pride and choking back tears. And you graduates can be all grown up and still be the students, our teachers and staff, have known, loved, and cared for these last 13 years. No matter how you look at it, you are and always will be part of the Clarkston Community Schools and Renaissance family, and all of our lives have been changed for the better for knowing you. Congratulations, class of 2023. Well, I'm going to brag just a little because um, Dr. Ryan's our next speaker, and I think he spends more time in my building than any other in the district, and I love it. So I would like to invite Dr. Ryan to come share with us. Thank you, Mr. Bigger. Mm -hmm. um, welcome, everybody, tonight. I have to tell you that for a superintendent, my personal two favorite events of the year, number one and two tied. One is when all our teachers and staff and everybody comes back to start the year because there's such an excitement to get everything rolling. And then RHS graduation because, thank you. Because you never know what's gonna happen, honestly. And it's kind of like renaissances from day to day, you know? And thinking about the years I've spent in Clarkston, as a teacher, principal, assistant, and a superintendent, a lot of experiences. And sometimes you bump into people from your past 
RHS just like Vegas that way because a couple weeks ago I ran into one of my former students and there's another couple students that are actually working here still but uh, Charles Philpot, the first or second where are you at Chucky please stand up can we have the house lights towards this is not rehearsed he is a wild looking dude please stand up and look a hand He came up to me a couple weeks ago, man, I know you. I was like, I don't think I know you. He's like, imagine me without the beard, about 20 years younger or so. And it took me back to when Chucky was in my science class when I was a first year teacher. And he was the terror that every teacher worries about. He kept me going week after week and I didn't think I was gonna make it. And it's one of those situations to where, as a teacher, you like to say when you look back, I had a big impact on a particular student, right? I changed their life, made a difference. In this case, oh yeah, don't point at me because you know what? You made a difference for me. You changed me. You tested my resilience and eventually you taught me how to kind of hang in there as a first year teacher. And I kept telling you, someday, Chucky, you're gonna have a kid. <laughs> yeah, all that fun and games is gonna be over because they're gonna be just like you. And lo and behold, we have a Charles Philpot graduating tonight. Please take a quick stand. I'll wave to you. Where are you at? Outstanding. And the great thing about both of these guys is that when I knew Chucky back when he was in high school, when he graduated, I can remember that he's one of the biggest hearted guys that ever got through the high school and I had that first couple experiences as a teacher. And what I hear about his son at RHS and seeing for myself is he brings that sense of heart to RHS. And when we were walking out of dinner tonight, he caught me and I think there might have been a tear in this guy's eye, but I don't know, told me that the best thing he's ever done was raise his son to get him here tonight. And gosh, gave me goosebumps. So big hand, guys. Nice. Thank you. Secondly, I want to begin by recognizing the RHS staff. Every last one of those individuals under the leadership of Gary Bigger works miracles. I've seen it. I am in a lot of buildings across the district. We have a lot of ground to cover. But I, I love Renaissance because it is a place with a heart. It's a place where you can be different and be accepted. You can be somebody who has to go really far in their challenges and still come out on top. And I totally tip my hat and applaud the staff of RHS. Thank you, guys. But I also promised my team I'd stick to some comments that I actually prepared, which I'm not always good at. So I'm going to put my old man glasses on and share a couple quick thoughts with you. And I have to look at RHS class of 2023. Today marks the end of a significant chapter in your lives and the beginning of a new one. When I look out at all of you, I see potential. I see a group of accomplished young adults in the sweet spot of life. You're old enough to know better and you have the knowledge and experience to be successful. But still, you are young enough to embrace your creativity and color outside the lines when necessary. And I love that about this school and this class. As you embark on this next chapter, you are in the driver's seat. What happens next is up to you. Right now, as your parents, family, friends, and teachers will tell you, you can only see the road ahead and the first turn in the distance. Over time, you'll experience many turns, hills, and detours. The only way to find out what lies ahead is to continue to move forward. Inspiration, which is kind of a little bit of the theme of this evening and where we find our inspiration, is the fuel that drives us towards goals. It's what motivates us to push beyond our limits into the unknown and achieve greatness. But what inspires each of us is different. We know that. For some, inspiration comes from within. A burning desire to succeed that cannot be quenched. For others, it comes from the people around us. Those who believe in us and support us through thick and thin. Many who are in the audience this evening. And for some, inspiration comes from the challenges we face, the obstacles we overcome, and the things that we learn along the way, even if we're a hot mess doing it. Amen. 
It's difficult to answer the question of who or what changed the course of my life. I'm an old man now, and there have been many twists, turns, peaks, and valleys. Each time, there was something or someone, more importantly, that inspired me to succeed and keep going when I thought I couldn't. I have no doubt that you, too, will have a very similar experience along your journey. In my younger years, I found myself looking to someone, a great person, doing great things. Over time, I realized that I'm inspired by youth, I'm the potential, and the individuals who accomplish their goals and despite all obstacles. I'm pretty sure each one of you checks both of those boxes. We heard lists uh, from Ms. Port earlier. For two years now, I've had the pleasure of heading a mentor group with a handful of Renaissance students, but honestly, I don't like to call it that. I certainly don't talk, walk into a room and bestow them with any kind of sage wisdom or knowledge. No, we come together as equals, as they'll tell you. We eat a lot of Jimmy John's. You might have that reputation in donuts or whatever we think is food, but we eat well. We talk about school, life at home, mistakes we've made, and decisions that are, we're struggling with. We've built a camaraderie and a level of trust, and I think it's better, safe to say that I walk away from our time together for some of our graduates this night, inspired to be a better superintendent, a community member, and most importantly, a father. One of the young men in my group is here with us today, Reese. Like many of you, Reese had several obstacles to overcome to find success. He could have thrown in the towel and given up, but he didn't. I can tell you, I heard a lot of stories. He'll walk across the stage in a few minutes and accept his diploma, then it's off to the Marine Corps, as you heard earlier, for him. Chair for the Marine Corps. As I said, looking at people overcome things inspires me and in seeing the potential in this room. And I could try to guess what inspired Reese to keep moving forward, but I thought it would be a lot cooler to actually hear from him. So he's going to share a little bit of my time tonight. Come on up. Reese. Good evening, everybody. Quickly, before I talk about what inspires me, I want to thank everyone here for attending the ceremony of the, of the RHS class of 2023. I also want to share my appreciation for Dr. Ryan here for allowing me this opportunity to speak on behalf of not only myself and my fellow students and friends. When I found out I would be given this opportunity to speak about my inspiration at graduation, I really put thought into what, who and what motivates me. Just a few things in my life right now that inspire me are my mom and her work ethic that she has passed down along to me, my firm belief that I was put here on this earth to do true good, and my dedication to the Marine Corps that has given me a new sense of purpose in my life, as well as the will to bear the core values, honor, commitment, and courage. But the biggest inspiration that came to mind is my late Grandpa Timmy. My grandpa was diagnosed with cancer and lost his battle on his 61st birthday, June 11, 2017, when I was just 12 years old. But my grandpa was a huge figure in my life who I respect greatly. He taught me how to be respectful, he showed me how to set the example, and he always had a great sense of humor, all things that I like to emulate in my own life. I do not know who I would be today without him, and tonight I believe I made him. <laughs> Sorry. I believe I made him proud. All this to say is critical for us to have something in our lives that inspires and motivates us, especially in times of weakness, whether it's a person, a period of time, or a feeling within, it's our inspirations that keep us moving and help us look forward to the futures and what they hold. Here's to all of us finding success in the future. Good luck to all of you as I pass it back to Dr. Ryan. Hey. Nice. Thank you. All right. Do you see what I'm talking about? He actually has bobbleheads floating around in the back of the audience here. <laughs> Next year, come on. Seriously, that captures everything that I really wanted to be able to portray tonight to you guys. You know, talking to our class of 2023, as I wish you well, take on every obstacle. You guys have nothing but potential only limited by what's in your own mind. Go after it, right? Find and chase those dreams. Find a person that you can share it with, and you'll never look back with regrets, okay? So my best love, appreciation, and wish you guys all good luck, class of 2023. Take care.
can never get through a speech without pulling that mic off, can you? So have you ever heard of the phrase, splashed on the scene? Like you made a splash on the scene, you know? Well, our next speaker definitely splashed on the scene here at Renaissance. She's taught classes here in computer tech, English, and leadership, and has worked tirelessly to contribute both as a team member and a staff in improving Renaissance experience for students. Please welcome our Renaissance High School staff speaker, English and leadership teacher, Edna Silve. Dr. Ryan, Mr. Bigger, members of the Board of Education, family and friends of our graduates and the class of 2023 graduates, thank you for the privilege of speaking to you this evening. It is an honor. I'm going to try not to cry, but it's really hard to see this group of kids go. Um, <clears throat> so here we are, commencement, one of, the, one of life's momentous occasions. Today marks the ending of a chapter of your lives, a chapter marked with childhood wonder and excitement. Today also marks the beginning of new chapters in your life. Chapters filled with new adventures, challenges, people, experiences, and other momentous life occasions. Today I have been tasked with the responsibility of giving you advice as you go forward to write your own story. This is a difficult challenge because as I have learned through my experience as a high school educator, you can't give advice to teenagers because they already know it all. Yet, here I stand, determined to impart some knowledge, some greater meaning that you can take with you as you embark on your journey in life. As I scoured my brain trying to gather great pieces of advice to bestow upon you, I thought of old, ad old adages like, never judge a book by its cover, or things like, measure twice, cut once. And I even thought of some of my grandmother's advice like, never leave home without clean underwear on. While all those things are true and very practical pieces of advice, I wanted to impart some deep wisdom, all while keeping it simple. So, after much thought, I came up with two pieces of advice that will serve you best in this life. The first, which I think is the greatest and most simplistic piece of advice I can give you, is to live in the moment. You will find, especially as you get older, that too much time is spent looking back on your life looking at the choices you made, the opportunities that you did or didn't take, and even the people who have come and gone. You will also find that a great deal of time is spent looking ahead. Many of you have been looking ahead to this very moment where you leave high school behind and step into your future. While it is important to learn from your past and look towards your future with hope and anticipation, I implore you to stop and take in the present. Pay attention and soak in the moments around you. Look around at the people who are sitting next to you. Take in the advice being bestowed upon you by your peers and advisors and bask in this joyous occasion with your loved ones. You have worked hard to get to this very moment, so savor it. The last lesson I have for all of you is to look for the lollipop moments in your life. At this moment, you're probably wondering what a lollipop moment is and so allow me to explain. This year, RHS created a leadership class with the goals of providing another avenue for our students to build positive relationships with one another, as well as to help foster an even greater positive school culture. Students in this class spent time looking at characteristics of leaders, defining what their leadership style is, as well as thinking about the impact that everyday moments have on individuals. To explore the power of everyday moments and the impact that can be made, we watched a TED Talk by Drew Dudley. In this talk, Dudley shares a story about his experience working at his college. On his last day of working for his school, a student approached him about a moment that occurred between them four years earlier. She tells Dudley that on her first day of college, she was standing in line at the registrar's office. While in line, she made the decision right then and there to not attend school. She wasn't ready. Just then, Dudley appeared in the student union wearing a ridiculous hat, carrying a sign to promote his organization's event, and passing out lollipops. Dudley stopped in front of her and stared at her. 
A guy standing next to her laughed, and Dudley gave him a lollipop and said, you need to give this lollipop to the beautiful woman standing next to you. <clears throat> the boy sheepishly handed the, her the lollipop, and everyone around them laughed. In that moment, amongst all the laughter, she realized that she was exactly where she needed to be. She never spoke to Dudley again in all of her four years at school, but upon learning he was leaving, she took the opportunity to share with him just how important he was in her life. That kind moment, which was so insignificant to Dudley, as he completely forgot about it, profoundly changed her life. It not only helped to give her the strength to stay in school, but she went on to date and later marry the man in line with her. Now as you sit here today, think about the people who did or said something that fundamentally changed you. Ask yourself, have you ever told them or thanked them? Has anyone ever told you or thanked you for being that person in their life? For many of us, that answer is no, but why is that? Dudley proposes that we don't share because we are scared to acknowledge that we are that powerful that we are frightened that we can matter so much to other people. I honestly don't know if he's right about that, but what I do know is that we're all catalysts for change and that we need to celebrate and value the impact that we have in each other's lives. I encourage you to share these lollipop moments with those individuals in your life who have made an impact. Celebrate not just the moments in your life, but celebrate the people in your life who made those moments possible. So as to lead by example, let me take a moment to say thank you to our class of 2023 graduates for having made a difference in my life. Over the past four years, I have learned so much from all of you. I have been inspired by moments of triumphs. I have bore witness to you as you have overcome learning challenges, battled anxiety and depression, find resilience through a pandemic, and even endured the loss of loved ones, relationships, and even friendships. Yet, it is the simple everyday moments that made a real difference in my life. It is listening to Allie's feet shuffle across the hallway on her way to class. It's Liv coming to my classroom to share the latest ongoings in her life. It's listening to Jason gain more confidence in public speaking during morning announcements. It's being greeted each day with, hey queen, by Olivia. It's wondering how many times Hannah's going to leave her water bottle in my room each week if Gracie's going to have her McDonald's breakfast sandwich delivered in second or third hour, or if today is going to be the day that Jack actually recites a Jack fact. It's seeing Mackenzie be a pillar of strength and support for her classmates, and Reese embrace the responsibility of being a role model for his peers. It's learning that Caleb used his winter wish to wish for lunch for Mr. Kelly. It's the sound of Jay's laughter filling the classroom or the impromptu concerts Cameron gives in the hallway. I would be remiss if I didn't point out his sass and side eye as well. It's listening to Elijah brag about his basketball game that, he, that day and watching Joe Reese fall asleep sitting straight up and wondering how bad his neck is going to hurt when he wakes up. It's catching Charlie and JD playing Battleship in class and joking with them about getting their work completed. It's teasing James about stealing his Mickey Mouse sweatshirt, or seeing Noah quietly enter the classroom each day with his hood pulled up so as not to be seen. It's walking the hallway every day and getting a smile and a hey Sobe from Miguel. It's hearing Jacob's music from his speaker in the hallway before he actually makes it to class. It's loudly greeting Dylan, first thing, first hour, and joking with him about his assignments and returning my novel to my classroom library. It's the quiet moments and the occasional smiles from Hope, Cody, Tristan, Kenny, and Dan. It's Sam's positive attitude and kind smile. It is the interesting and stimulating conversations that I've had with Evan, especially during our unit on Edgar Allan Poe and Stephen King. It's even the loud, crazy third hour ELA 9 class I had my first year with Maddie and some of the other graduates. You know who you are. <laughs> it's all of these moments and so many more that give me a reason to show up each day, that push me to be the best teacher I can be for you. Thank you for helping me find more reasons to find joy and purpose in teaching. Thank you for fueling my love of teaching. I will close my remarks with this. 
As you walk across the stage tonight to receive your diploma, each of you will receive a lollipop. Let it serve as a symbol of all the moments and people in your life that have inspired you. Let it also serve as a symbol of all the moments and people you have inspired as well. Congratulations, class of 2023. It has been a real privilege to have been your teacher and one of your speakers this evening. Thank you. So earlier tonight, we uh, were over across the street at the, uh, awards, the outdoor dinner and awards ceremony, and uh, several people received um, scholarships, and I just want to recognize them in this ceremony a little more formally. Um, from uh, the Waypoint Church, gave scholarships to Mackenzie Leake and Jacob Iacchini. <laughs> the Clarkson Area Optimist gave a scholarship to Jacob Iacchini. Clarkson Rotary gave scholarships to Olivia Shields and Cam Turner. M3 Investments gave scholarships to Hannah Lesnow and Olivia Shields. And uh, also, I'm always impressed with the Clarkson United Methodist Church Hugh Rowe Scholarship um, as they gave a scholarship to everyone. And I really hope that you find a place to go and get some training, whether it be in a trade or college, and please utilize that scholarship. And I'm gonna tell all of you right now, if you're having trouble or not knowing where to go for the scholarship, um, we're not going anywhere, so come check with us and we'll help you out, so. So our theme for tonight is what changed the course of your life, a person, an event, a moment, etc. And I want to just talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Silve, um, Mrs. Hilliker, and Mrs. Buckley to please pick up the bags next to your chairs. And I want each of you to take out a pad of paper and a pen. I promise this will be the last note taking you have to do in high school. So we talk about things that change your life, and sometimes we don't realize exactly what those are. But I was reading a little more into this in a more of a philosophical sense, and to put it kind of simply, it's a fork in the road. It's a time where depending on the moment and how you react to it, your life will ultimately change and never be the same. You can look back on it and say, that was a time where if that would not have happened, my life would be different today. It's an important moment. And many of you had those moments already. But I want us to kind of think through some of this tonight. As you go through your path in life, undoubtedly moments are going to happen that will change you forever. And sometimes we just need to take a minute and realize it, which is why I gave you that pad of paper, because you may forget everything else that was said tonight. But I want you to take that, and as you're going through your life, write some things down. Think about things that change you, things that make you better, things that make you not as good. Because we all have those times and those moments where we're our best, and where we're not our best. Um, so I'm gonna tell a little story about Amy Horvath today. She doesn't know this. Um, because I had a moment where I was not at my best in the hall. And I was getting after a student for not being where they should be. And later, Amy came to my office and said, you know, you were too harsh there. And she made me think, and she doesn't know the impact this had until tonight, but I changed what I, what I thought, not only about that student, but about the way I need to treat people. And it made me realize that my words have an impact. And 
that impact changed me for the better, and that was just earlier this year. And I appreciated her for having the love for students and the love for me as a leader to come and say, you know, that really wasn't very nice. And so I went and apologized to the student, and I apologized to the student that was with that student, and I apologized to Miss Amy, and I changed. And I look back on that moment, early this year, it was early in the year, and I realized that it's a, it was one of those quintessential moments that I needed to change. But I just want to share a couple things with you tonight. I promise I wouldn't walk around, but I can't help it, sorry. Um, so I, had two, I have two moments in my life I want to share with you, and uh, that changed me, okay? Uh, one of them was when I was in third grade and I got uh, diagnosed with dyslexia, all right? And back then, because I'm really old, uh, they didn't really have a lot of help back then. And so I went through all these tests, and then they sat down with my mom and dad, and back then they put you in a different room. So you sat over in this room, your parents met with a doctor, talked to them about stuff, and they said to my mom and my dad, they said, well, you know, he'll never, he'll, he might graduate high school, but he'll never go to college, you know? And my mom looked at the doctor and says, we're not gonna tell him that. <laughs> and my mom told me this story when I graduated with my master's degree. So even sometimes things happen and we don't realize that they change the trajectory of your life because my mom, who was a wise woman, knew that if the, I was told that by the doctor, that I'd be lucky to graduate high school and never go to college, then I would be lucky to graduate high school and I'd never go to college. And that was an important moment that I looked back on and my mom also, at that point in time, from third grade on, man, was she on me. I mean every day. And for those of you that know my story, I did a lot of packets to make up for classes I failed. I took summer school every single year. I barely graduated high school, and my mom has only swore once in her entire life, and it was at me when she said, please forgive me. Damn it, Gary, you better pass civics. I planned an open house. <laughs> okay? She was on me. But that moment, even though I didn't know it, changed my life. You know, it changed the trajectory of my life. And not that I would have lived a bad life, but it put me on a, a different path, and a path that I love, which is why I do what I do. And I told John Lucedo when I hired into Clarkson Community Schools, uh, Renaissance High School is the only job I want. Do not even ask. I don't want any other jobs in the district. This is my job, and I don't want to go anywhere else because this is where I'm supposed to be. So that's one. So. I want you to take a few moments at some point today or tomorrow on your pads and write things down. The second thing is my cousin. My cousin is the smartest person I know in the world. Um, he graduated high school as a valedictorian. He graduated college with a 4.0. He was a German and um, um, he was a German and journalism major. And for a living, this is what he does. He edits 300-page documents for a living. Now, not just grammar and spelling. So when you want to bid something, so I'm gonna give you a quick story. Uh, Los Angeles was going to have, put out to bid for a company to replace all of their water and sewer systems in the entire city. It was a $4 billion bid, okay? His job was to edit the document for the company that wanted the bid, not only for grammar and spelling, but also for, to make sure that it met the criteria that the bid required. That's a big job. Now, I am not that smart. But my cousin and I are three months apart. Um, our moms were sisters. They were pregnant at the same time. As much as I struggled and as much as my cousin had easy life for school, in school, he never judged me. He's my best friend to this day. We talk two to three times a week. He lives in Seattle. And he never judged me. He never judged me for not getting as good of grades, never judged me for having to go to summer school or anything. And when I look back on my life and I think about things that changed my life forever, he's one that changed my life forever. And I love the fact that he just accepted me for who I was and just loved me for who I was. And he is my best friend. And he is the one that knows everything about me. He's also the one when I say something, he can say, uh, yeah, right, because he knows it. But I just wanted to share a couple of those stories because we all have these moments, all right, and things we can look. So I want you to write this down. And when you write down those moments, tear the page out 
Put it in your wallet. Put it in your purse. Put it on your mirror. Put it someplace to remind you not only that you have defining moments, but that you can be a defining moment for somebody else if you just... As you move forward in life, keep writing your people events and moments and how you react to them, and it will define who you are, and you will become great. All right, at this time, I would like to invite Hannah Lesnow to come up as our valedictorian and give our student speech. by thanking the students, teachers, and staff that helped me get here today. I transferred to Renaissance because a few of my close friends convinced me to come here, and I'm so glad they did, because being here at Ren, surrounded by close friends and teachers who actually care, have helped me in so many ways. I know a lot of us never thought we'd make it here, including myself, but we did, and we should be very proud of ourselves. As I look around, I see a large group of intelligent, strong, compassionate young adults with the ability to take on the world. Today is not just a celebration for us graduating, but a celebration that honors all of our unique journeys, setbacks, and triumphs. I would like all of us to take a moment to stop and think about everything that has occurred in our lives leading up to this day, the good and the bad. For those who have gone through their fair share of hard times but continue to grow and make it here today, I applaud you. For those who have struggled with mental illness, anxiety, and depression, but had the ability to ask for help, I applaud you. For those who have ever felt alone, out of place, or have struggled to find your voice, but continue to move forward, I applaud you. And lastly, for anyone who struggled to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but never gave up, I applaud you. I would like to end by saying we have all been through so much, but here we are. And this is not the end, but instead a new beginning, filled with many possibilities. As you all enter the real world, no matter what life throws at you, never give up on yourselves, and continue to chase your dreams no matter how big or small. But most importantly, I encourage you all to enjoy life, take time to appreciate the journey on your way to the next destination, wherever that may be. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2023. So Handy, you know they do a survey that says that uh, people on the things you're most afraid of and public speaking is ahead of death, so people would rather die than speak in public. So nice job tonight. All right, this is the moment you've all been waiting for, the uh, conferring of diplomas. At this time, I would like to invite our very own Mrs. Youngerman to come up and read off the names of the graduates. Would our staff leaders please bring, this, bring the graduates up? Jason Lee Bielkini. James Daniel 
Neil Kennedy. Caleb Ross Clifford. J.D. Francis Doherty. Olivia Lee Davis. <laughs> Noah Joseph Dawson. Jacob Ryan Feichner. <laughs> Madeline Grace Hardenberg. Dylan Michael Hartfield. <laughs> Hope Her. Miguel Manuel Hernandez Rosas. Gracie May Holcomb. Cody Scott Johnson. <laughs> Tristan John Kennedy. Mackenzie Michelle Leak. <laughs> Hannah Noel Lesno. Jack Patrick Mayhew. <laughs> Elijah Keenan Miller.
Jordan Ellen Moore. Charles Martin Philpot the third. Kenny Shelton Ramirez. Joe Lee Reese the third. Danielle Rose Schoenfeld. Evan James Schweiger. Olivia Rose Shields. Reese Matthew Stahavia. Cameron Michael Turner. Samantha Jane Wolgast. Ali Yenshaw. Graduates remain standing. To Sean Ryan, the Board of Education, I certify that the graduates before you have completed all requisite materials to be considered graduates from high school from the Clarkson Community Schools. Graduates, at this time, I would like you to move your tassel to the left side of your mortar board. Congratulations. I would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight. And uh, graduates, congratulations one more time. And uh, parents, if you could please wait until the graduates have exited the auditorium before leaving your seats so we can get them out. And uh, graduates, you can pick up your diplomas from Mrs. Porritt tomorrow or anytime next week. All right, it's time for the recessional. Yeah.